Hi. My question is, I've been uh, experiencing Abraham for about a year now, and it's quite interesting, and I'm really enjoying it where it's putting me. But the question that keeps coming up to me is, if it's so wonderful where you are, why do we choose to come back? Because <laughs> there is nothing more wonderful than to be physically focused and in tune with that. That's even better. In other words, you understand that expansion comes from the exploration of the variety. And expansion is what is most sought after. And since it's understood from non-physical that you can have expansion in joy, then you come. It's only after you get here that, that you forget that you can have it in joy. You think you can't have it in joy. So then you ask that question. You think that you're sacrificing the good times for expansion. You don't have to. But then why do you need contrast? If we have everything we need, why do we need contrast? Because you can't stand still and without contrast, you can't expand. When things are really, really good, you say, okay, hold it right there, 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 hold it right there. Yeah, hold it there. Hold it right there. Hold it right there. Hold it right there. So you get bored. Boredom. Boredom. Yeah. Expansion. And it's important to understand that the best of life, you see, your question is coming from a premise that sounds like you don't understand that source in your perspective here, where the good times really are rolling is not involved in all of this. And that's not true. That source energy is involved in all of this. When you tune to it and you let that involvement of source and those higher frequencies flow through you, that's the best of all of it. That's when you feel the most invigoration, the most enlivenment, the most passion, the most joy, the most love. So even everyone up there is always, I mean, all of you guys and all of us are always interacting constantly. Yeah. Always interacting constantly. And we always know it and are thriving as a result of it. You sometimes know it better than others. And to the degree that you know it and allow it, then you enjoy it. And if you're not knowing it and allowing it, then you say, tell everybody that needs to know that I'm not coming back. I'm done. Esther had a conversation last week with a longtime acquaintance. He is the man who created a beautiful sculptured railing around the pond at the Abraham Hicks Center. Really a beautiful thing, but it needs some touching up. There are some leaves and some little critters that are on it that are beginning to rust. And so she called him so that he could come back and tend to it. And she had not talked to him since Jerry had made his transition. So he was all full of his sorrow about that. And Esther was wanting to soothe him because there's no reason to have sorrow about all of that. She was wanting to help him to know it is all right. And he said, you know, when I was there last, it was about three years ago when he was there, he said, at the time I was meeting the two of you, three members of my family had had their death experience all within a couple of months of each other. And he said, I was talking to a man who said to me, do you know why Jesus cried when he brought Lazarus back from the dead? And Esther is listening and he said, do you know why? And Esther said, why? And he said, because he was sad that he was bringing him back from a good place to a not good place. Esther literally did a spit take with her tea. They were on the telephone. <laughs> She wanted to say, we're talking about Jesus, right? <laughs> we're talking about somebody who knows this stuff. In other words, surely somebody who knows that wouldn't do that. If that wasn't a good idea, there must be something lost in translation here, but it's a pretty common belief. People in their not living the way they want to live. They've made up all kinds of really crazy stories to explain why things don't feel better for them now. And all of that is part of that. It is a flawed premise to believe that you are here working your way in to that 
heaven where everything is perfect and while we are the first to describe to you the elation of alignment we will not say that it is only in the non-physical that it is experienced and in fact that's why you came here you got to understand that this is the leading edge this is where that which creates creates in other words humans especially in the context of conversation like this and the one that we introduced through the example it makes it sound like there's someone outside of you who is doing all of the creating and what role do you play you're just sort of banging around trying to follow around to find clues about what's the best way to stand <laughs> well let's stand over here for a while no this isn't it over here no this isn't it until you introduce yourself and acquaint yourself and find resonance with the whole of who you are you can't begin to live the joyous life that you've come to live and it's our promise to you that once you consistently tap in to that pure positive energy and you allow that confidence and that worthiness and that love to flow through you moment by moment here you'll discover that heaven on earth is really what it's all about and anything else is a big misunderstanding thank you yeah